Uh, we're online right now. We're going to start a recording so that we have this all recorded for use later on our YouTube channel. So just as a reminder, uh, if you do happen to participate in a poll, survey, chat, or video, uh, what you say is being recorded or will be recorded, as well as what's going on your background. So just pay attention. <laughs> and we'll get started in just a few minutes. And that's our two o'clock hour, folks. We thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Joe O'Donnell. I work with Terrapin Technology Group. I'm the uh, senior technical uh, engineer and uh, instructor. And joining us today is Betty Nelson, all the way from Maine. All the way from Maine. Thanks, Joe. Yes, I also work with Terrapin and I am the practice support coordinator, which is just a name I came up with to try to summarize the fact that I've been doing this for 40 years. <laughs> Longer than we like to admit sometimes. <laughs> I don't really want to talk about that. Yeah, 21 is a litigation legal secretary and the remainder of time working in IT. So uh, we're excited to uh, share some information with you today that should hope hopefully make things a little easier in this new webinar world we find ourselves in. Absolutely. So let's, uh, now that we've done away with the uh, introductions, we're going to go ahead and turn our video off so you can concentrate on what's really important for today. <laughs> and that is our presentation. So we're going to go ahead and share a, uh, a presentation with you here. And this is our topic for today, device checklist for successful web conferences. And boy, this has really been a, a hot topic, right, Betty? Oh, it has. Um, people never thought they'd be working from home, let alone having to appear on camera from home. And there, we are, we're hoping that we have a few tips and tricks that will help everyone have a more professional experience, whether they're hosting or attending. Absolutely. So we'll go ahead and get right into it. I mean, really what's kind of sparked all of this is just a changing times, right, Betty? It's definitely a change in times. I can remember asking to work from home would have been like asking to work from Hawaii. You know, nobody at the firm would have approved that. Um, even California, you know, employment laws pretty much prevented that from being an option. But with COVID being in the forefront of our lives, um, a lot of changes are happening and working remotely is definitely something that's going to continue for some firms through the end of the year. Absolutely. And whether you're using a, a laptop with a built-in webcam, microphone, and speakers, uh, you can have a much improved experience by investing, uh, well, very easily under $500. But uh, essentially, you don't want your kids' TikTok videos to be better than the quality of the business meetings and webinars that you're holding. That's what it comes <laughs> down to. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Yeah. And we don't want the people that we're engaging to lose interest and start ser searching for uh, maybe even cat videos while we are uh, giving some type of uh, webinar or talking on an important subject. And while, <laughs> while we can't control everything that goes on, we, we can control some things. We can control the speed of our internet. Uh, we can control what we're using, uh, what we invest in as far as equipment, so that people don't end up judging your services by the quality of your webinar uh, or your web meeting. So that kind of takes us into, well, what, what exactly do we do and what do we need to consider? Um, I think we all know you can have all the best equipment in the world, but if you don't know how to use it and configure it, the experience will be just as poor as not having invested in the equipment at all. That's so true. So what's one of the biggest headaches then? What do you think? Um, I think not knowing how to switch audio sources in your meeting if you have a problem. Uh, people seem to not test their connections prior to a meeting. I recently watched a very large public hearing that they had to literally stop and reschedule because they had not tested the features properly. Um, I also think people need to remember, even though it's wonderful to have Bluetooth um, capability in your personal life, that when you're in this type of an environment, it may be best to have a wired connection so you have reliability. And lastly, just getting some good training. Uh, Terrapin definitely offers that through Benjamin Wadsworth. He meets with law firms and helps them 
receive training and set up their devices and have checklists and, you know, step-by-step -step information available. Uh, lots of times this is now happening in a law firm. I know hearings are happening via a Zoom meeting with courts and attorneys are going to want a really nice location where they can stand up at a podium and deliver their oral arguments. So uh, we're, we're happy to help with that. Absolutely. And that takes us down to, you know, now is what, what do I really need to accomplish that? And we, we went through, my goodness, we went through a lot of different equipment and uh, talked to different people. Benjamin was a key source of information for helping us kind of sort out. What do you use? What's the best uh, things to invest in, uh, both from the bare minimum that we're going to talk about first to how do we make it a little bit better? That's right. Um, I do remember Benjamin saying, don't spend $70 when you can spend $130. So I wanted to yeah. make sure and get that in there. Yeah. So let's let's talk about just the bare minimums here. It, you have to have a webcam. And it's it's funny, up until the the COVID-19 pandemic hit, no, everyone thought, oh, yeah, I can join a go-to meeting and I can attend and I can listen to it. Uh, but participating in it, that wasn't always happening. It wasn't always a two-way communication. So they never thought about, oh, I don't have a webcam on my desktop computer. I don't have a microphone on my desktop computer. I did have speakers, but that was it. Notebook computer users were in a better position because that stuff was usually built into the more modern computers. But essentially, uh, th the first thing you need to have is a good picture quality. So having a good camera is essential to having something that's going to look good. It's not going to be like the size of a thumbnail. It's not going to be pixelated or garbled uh, or come across unprofessional. And, and the, the, the meaning of that is that if it is, it's going to be hard to gain the trust of your audience uh, just because of the poor quality of your, your video feed or the picture. Okay. So a high, yeah, so a high definition webcam is what we consider really a bare minimum. Uh, the, the one we have pictured here is the Logitech Brio. It's a really good, solid uh, webcam, uh, kind of middle of the road, provides really good quality, has a built-in camera and sound and everything, and it works really well. Uh, video is nice, but the other side of that is having good, clear audio. So in, a lot, in many ways, clear audio is maybe even a little bit more important than the video because some people may dial into your video, your webinar via just phone rather than uh, joining it with video. So uh, having a good headset with a good microphone, very key in that position. Uh, it also is going to help, uh, you know, if you have noise canceling headset uh, and microphone joined into that, like we have pictured here. Uh, again, Logitech, we found, makes a good middle of the road headset with a microphone that helps control the noise level and has really good audio uh, for what you'd expect. Yeah, we have to remember people are working from home frequently now that it's soon going to be September. And I think in California, a lot of uh, schools have started remote learning already. You might have children in the house, your spouse or significant other, other family members might be working from home. So noise canceling is going to be a feature that's important. Yeah. So a good, a good high quality uh, webcam and headset with a microphone is really the bare minimum of what you're going to need to have. One note uh, to keep in mind, and we have found this, uh, there are uh, what are called HD or high definition webcams, and there are 4K webcams. Uh, the Logitech Brio uh, is a 4K webcam. It can operate in high definition, just normal HD. Keep in mind that the higher resolution you operate in, the more bandwidth it uses on the internet to uh, produce that video. So if you're uh, if you don't have a uh, a really good internet connection, you're going to want to dial that back to the HD connection for your video. Yeah, I actually know of an attorney who invested a lot of money. He's kind of a geek about tech stuff and had fun buying his equipment. And he's in a county where he had the best internet connection he. Could he could get and found, unfortunately, that his high level equipment was sucking up so much bandwidth that his webinars ended up being horrible anyway. Yeah. So he had to swap that equipment out. So it's definitely something we didn't think of in advance, but we, we've learned about for sure. 
Absolutely. And the Brio webcams, I, I believe they run somewhere around two two $220, uh, depending on where you source them from. They actually went for a lot less before the pandemic. And uh, because of the uh, demand for them, which uh, I'll be honest, if you're going to try to order a webcam, uh, you'd be ready for a little bit of a wait to get them because you're, they're in really, really high demand. There so, are. I just um, was talking to an attorney yesterday who has gone to seven stores and can't find a printer. Uh, it's similar with webcams and uh, good quality headsets. Everyone's scrambling for equipment to work from home, and you're going to notice that when you try to purchase some of this stuff. Yeah, notebook computers too, by the way. Well, this is great. So here's the next thing to keep in mind. There's a lot of good choices, and you may say, well, this is fantastic. Uh but we have another recommendation for you. We do. And that it's... is this. Don't use Bluetooth. <laughs> you know, it's crazy because I love my AirPods. I love Bluetooth connection. I like being able to step away from my computer or my phone, turn the tea kettle off, still be on a call. The convenience is amazing. But when it comes to hosting a webinar, the risks are just too high to use unwired connections. And uh, Joe was pointing out it would be easy for the Bluetooth configuration to get confused, especially if you're like, uh, we have a, a, like a couple Bose speakers that numerous people in the house connect to and connections can be taken over. So you could be in a web meeting using Bluetooth and suddenly your son in geography class or perhaps playing a video game, his audio starts showing up on your webinar. Uh, that right. would not only be embarrassing, but really difficult to resolve in the middle of a webinar. This is true. So uh, wired connections are always best, uh, not the most uh, you know conducive to looking the best on your desk, but it will produce better quality and a lot less interference interruptions. And I can't help, you know, I got my headset on right now of thinking of the movie, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding and walking away from my desk and forgetting that I'm wired to my desk and <laughs> jerking my head back. But I love at least, that scene. <laughs> <laughs> but at least, you know, like right now, no one would see that. I, it may happen, <laughs> but no one would see it. So that's that's a, a good reminder to, to utilize that. And it'll save you a little money too because you're not going the wireless route, which is never a bad thing. Yep. So we're going to talk about lighting now. In fact, I am still scrambling to get the right lighting in my house. I have far too many windows, so I'm tucked away in the guest room. But this just reminds me, you know, I've looked at some webinars and wondered, what am I seeing? And really, it's lots of shadows on certain people's setups. And lighting is going to be important for sure. It certainly is. And, it, you know, you, you want your, your video meeting to be uh, effective and engaging, and you can't do that if no one can see you. So I think everyone has attended some type of webinar where uh, maybe there is a window behind the person, and the webcam is trying to auto-balance the light, and it makes the person really dark, almost like they're in the shadow, and it, it's focusing on the light behind them. Uh, or sometimes uh, they have uneven light, or they're all washed out. Uh, these are all different things and you that you can uh, think about and using something to provide just a little bit of extra lighting, even just a small table lamp uh, on your desk next to you. Uh, so if you have a window behind you, the table lamp will illuminate your face so you have even lighting and it just looks a lot more inviting and it's less distracting uh, when you have that. And there's a lot of best practices when uh, go into thinking about that when making your, your video call look really great. And uh, we'll review some of the best lighting options for you uh, uh, going on. But first, let's take a look at some real life scenarios with some different, uh, some different uh, uh, equipment. So this first one we have here, uh, this is a, uh, uh, we, we appreciate uh, Benjamin being our uh, guinea pig, our <laughs> guinea pig for this. <laughs> He's been a good sport about it. He really was. He really was. So this is uh, basically an, a very inexpensive webcam. It has no light. And what do you notice? What do you notice here? There's the, the lighting's kind of weird. It looks, you know, he's against a white background, but it doesn't look white. It yeah, looks kind of like. Yeah, you, you would never know that. It's yeah, very beige. It is. Uh, it, it doesn't look good at all. He looks kind of 
you know, uh, maybe he's right in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, he actually is. It looks like he might be <laughs> suffering from something, but it doesn't look good uh, nonetheless. But then take a look at the next one. Now, this is the same thing, <clears throat> but just with a, a nice table lamp or a, a small lamp in front of him. And you'll see how the lighting is much better. So it doesn't take a lot of money or investment just to make it look a little bit better by placing a light in front of you. And again, just simple, something as simple as just a plain table lamp can help uh, add a lot of bit of, a lot of color and uh, better video. But there's yeah, quite a yeah. bit of difference. There is. All right, let's take a look at another one I have here. Uh, this is, uh, I always think of like when you go to Home Depot and you have the paintbrushes, the good, better, and the best. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, here we have a good webcam with no lighting whatsoever. So even the good webcams, even if you don't have any, it provides a little bit of, uh, you know, the, the, the white balance is much better if you want to get mm -hmm. technical for all of our photo friends out there. The white balance is much better. The white background actually looks white. So you can see a difference. Uh, even though Benjamin is still not smiling, looks like he's in a stand-up uh, for a lineup here. <laughs> let's, let's, take a, let's take a look at uh, the other one. Uh, this is a good webcam with lighting. Now, you'll notice there's not a lot of difference here. And that's yeah. the difference between having a very inexpensive webcam and a nicer one is it has a better... Uh, has a better ability to do the white balance. But even here, the colors look a little richer. Um, right. His eyes are illuminated a little bit better. Uh, the bags under his eyes are a little less prominent uh, because he's been up with his kids all night trying to produce this, <laughs> uh, the picture for us. Yes. But it, and I, it does work. I wanted to mention, by the way, if you're going to start some searches of your own on Amazon, you'll find webcams that seem like they'd be great, but they will be missing certain things like autofocus I mean, I would not want to have to adjust the focus on the camera itself or appear fuzzy midway through my webinar just because I, you know, moved my chair back slightly. Um, those are the things you might assume come standard, but really dig into those details so you can see doesn't have lighting, doesn't have a built-in microphone. Check out whether it's HD and if it is, is it scalable? And for sure, things like autofocus. Good point. And that's good uh, you brought that out because you'll see a lot of them out there. That's an excellent point. We did a lot of questions about that when people are researching webcams uh, to find them. Now, what do you do? what's the next thing you got to think about? Well, I would say your background. You yeah, yeah, your background. And uh, this was a, a funny uh, little video that we found. And uh, essentially, and it's not oh. going to play for me here, unfortunately. Oh. The way this works is you see this, this guy in his college dorm and it's a really, really messy uh, room. And what he does is he's going to have a web conference. He slides his computer out of way, throws everything off the bed into the middle of his room, and he has a curtain rod in his, in his uh, <laughs> dorm. And he pulls the curtain across and the curtain is printed to look like a clean room with a dresser in the background. <laughs> and as soon as he pulls it across, it does. It looks like a clean room. If we could only have that in real life. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it, that's, that's an important part is paying attention to what's in your background. Uh, you don't want to have piles of papers or anything like that. We're going to get into that a little bit in our next slide. We'll get into more detail. Yeah. So but that goes sure. into our whole appearance recommendations. That yeah. We have, right. I would say for sure you want to look the part, you know, wear professional, comfortable clothing, avoid super busy patterns, which could translate poorly on video. There are certain tie patterns that actually look like they're moving. Um, certain stripes, you, um, I know men should probably avoid that. Make sure your background is clean and appropriate. Um, Joe, what else? Uh, well, we talked about our lighting, which is really key. So if you're gonna have uh, you know, a window in your room and it's behind you, make sure you have a light in front of you to properly illuminate your face and what's going on. Uh, we talked about your background and not, you know, make it look professional and what's going on. And don't let your, your background be so busy or a distraction to what you're going to be talking about. So they're paying more attention to what's behind you than what you're saying. Right. And gosh, I, I would say the most important part, try things ahead of time. Know what your settings are. Uh, have them test it out. Do a dry run. 
And Betty had a really good recommendation about your settings, having a cheat sheet. I uh, Yeah, I'm totally in favor of having a cheat sheet. Once you get all your settings the way you like it, first of all, um, if there's an option to save them as default, for sure do that. It saves a lot of time. And then have a cheat sheet. Uh, Joe shared his cheat sheet with me and it read like a rap sheet. I think it was about seven pages long. You can just <laughs> tell that he operates at a whole different geek level than I do. It, but, it was uh, a whole different sure. level. It was a whole different level. So yeah. um, the other thing um, is, you know, we talked about light position. We covered that. I did read a good tip that said if you don't have a lot of resources for light, sometimes you can use an extra computer and just put it on a Word document with a white screen to have to add light. There's all sorts of you know little tricks that I've noticed people have come up with. I've seen people even like sort of stage a room to look like an office. Um, that they're not using as an office. So, you know, people who are on these web meetings all day, and there certainly are people that have to be, uh, we're gonna have to put a little more time into it than others. Absolutely. Well, that kind of takes us into the next step is we've talked about the video and your appearance and the backgrounds and things of that nature. But that also kind of takes us into, like I had mentioned in the beginning, what I always consider even more important than the video, and that is thinking about how people are going to hear you and what's involved with that. That's right. If somebody's appearing um, by audio only and they have a, a large role in the process, whether it's a court hearing or a web meeting, you know, a lot of Zoom meetings some, or even go to meetings, people set up as audio calls only. It's an inexpensive and quick way to have an audio meeting. If something's wrong with the audio, it's going to you know, affect their perception of everything and people will focus on the issues like your audio cutting out, they will stop listening to what you're saying. They will listen to barking dogs or distant conversations. Maybe the television's on loudly in the next room. So uh, again, that's a great uh, vote in for using a noise canceling headset. Yeah, absolutely. And we got some examples to show you here. Uh, the first one we have is a webcam audio that Benjamin put to, put together for us. And this is just using the audio from webcam. Now I'm gonna switch our the presentation here just quickly to my desktop because the audio doesn't play within uh, the webinar the service we have. So bear with me for just a minute. I'm gonna share my desktop so you can hear this and we'll, we'll play it. So now you can see my entire screen, but I wanna go ahead and share the sound that I have here. And let's just go ahead and play this. Can we turn the volume up a little bit? Let me try that one more time. <laughs> he sounds as, like a mouse. <laughs> he does. That's as good as it gets, folks, just right there. Okay. Okay. So let me go back to our presentation where we were at. So that's what the webcam audio sounds like. So if you had the Brio or another inexpensive webcam, that's what people are going to hear uh, when they're talking to you. Well, we don't, what we want to show you next is the audio that comes from when you're using a headset or a microphone that's in front of you. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you again. And I want you to see if you can tell the difference again with the sound using the headset. Well, so even, even though it's difference. yeah, it's a big difference. Even though it was super faint and hard to hear because you're using your headset, I get the problem. You could tell the first audio was super tinny. It sounded like two tin cans in a string, and the se second audio had rich tones. So that was a big difference, even though it was really hard to hear over the presentation. Yeah, and I'm getting notes here that other people couldn't hear it. So hear it at all? Yeah. Yeah, maybe didn't share it properly. So uh, let me try one more time because it really does make a big difference here. Let me try sharing this one more time. With I you think so you're you going to need to switch your audio so source, Joe, from your headset to something else. Let me for try them doing to that. hear it. Okay.
You're testing my technical prowess. This right I know. Now. And we may just need to send these examples to people later because they are worth looking at and we can easily do that. Just confirming, Joe, we can't hear any audio at all, yours or Benjamin's. <laughs> We're going to call that one a fail. We're going to call that one a fail. <laughs> we'll, we'll route that to you so you can listen to it on your own, which will probably sound a lot better to you uh, listen to it directly. Yeah. So, uh, hey, it happens to the best of us. We're just going to move on. <laughs> As you can see, audio is really important. If you can't it hear is. it, and you, and you difference. know what? That's a really good lesson that if there is audio in your presentation and you're using a headset, you need to rethink that program. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's exactly it. And there's no better way to prove that point than having it happen in real life. So <laughs> and that's, there you go. That leads us to the checklist. It really does. <laughs> Which we totally believe you uh, you need to worry about. You know, yeah. first of all, if you don't have good enough bandwidth, internet speed, and you get that little message. I don't know if any of you have been in a, hosting a presentation, and this little message flashes in the corner saying, "You don't have a good enough, you know, internet bandwidth for what you're trying to do." It just invokes panic in me for sure. So, um, trying to have the best internet connection, or asking members of your family to stop gaming, or you know, streaming, or perhaps you know. They can attend their class later. All those things would help uh, provide you with more bandwidth. Absolutely. And of course, you know, you have uh, your headset and your light source that are really important. That we talked about uh, paying attention to your background, uh, knowing your equipment and how it works. Obviously, we need a little bit of more uh, training on that. Right, Betty? We'll work on that later. <laughs> oh, we uh, will work on that. And, and as much testing as we did ahead of time and it worked for us, you know, obviously there's going to be issues that come up. So Having an outline or a script of what you do, where you're going to go, what you're talking about uh, will help you stay on point and to be able to continue your webinar, even when there might be things that might pop up uh, unexplained or unexpected, which it's the Internet and it's a computer. So things are going to happen. <laughs> so, so what could go wrong? <laughs> what it's, could go wrong? <laughs> you know, who knows? You know, you, you could, it could be like that's that guy that was doing the interview on CNN and his little girl walked into the background, you know, with yes. her little toy car. <laughs> it's, you know, things uh, like that are going to happen. It, when small things do happen, if you do not have an outline or a script, you will definitely get pulled off course. So that to me is the number one thing. Nothing that you read word for word, that would be horrible, but just have bullet points or, you know, plan in advance if you're co-presenting who's going to handle which topic so you're not speaking over each other for sure. And then, of course, the um, the settings cheat sheet. Again, um, if you do this once a month, you will not remember everything. So if you can't save things as a default setting, you're going to want a cheat sheet so you can quickly get back to that. Absolutely. And just to help you out, uh, we have a, a free little quick web conference checklist uh, that goes over all the points we talked about today, along with the listing of the equipment we talked about. Uh, feel free, if you'd like to have a copy of this, uh, to drop us an email at info at terrapintechnology.com. Uh, we would be more than happy to share that with you. And if you needed further assistance or had questions, uh, we would be happy to help you with that so that you can have a successful web conference, despite what device you're using. <laughs> Joe, does anyone have any questions? Let's see. If you have anything, you can just enter it in the chat. Looks like someone had talked about uh, they had upgraded their internet, which was really important. Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the key points on the handout, having good uh, internet. Because remember, if you're sharing that with your kids uh, and your, your spouse, or anyone else in the house, <laughs> that's going to be 
chipping away at your internet bandwidth. So make sure you have something that's adequate to take care of that. Yeah. So we have lots of people working from home right now. We do. Looks like there's a few others entering in a few things right now. Great. Someone had asked, if you're not hardwired, do you have any suggestions for a better connection with Zoom? Boy, that's a loaded question. Um, essentially, if you don't have a, a way to directly wire into your internet, having a really good wireless access point and being as close to it as you can so that the connection can take uh, the, the full bandwidth of what it's offering and right. will limit any type of interference or anything like that. Uh, is usually oh. really, really helpful. It is. And most homes nowadays have a, a choice between the 5G and the, is it 2.4? Yeah, 2.4. The the 2.4 goes further, but uh, does less bandwidth. And the 5G uh, does higher uh, bandwidth, but doesn't go through walls and, and uh, distance very, very well. So uh, depending right. on that will depend on which one you want to use. So if you could do your webinar from the room where your router is and set your settings to 5G, that should give you the best experience if that's possible. If you're close to it. Yep. And then someone had mentioned about uh, what about using a, uh, a booster? Not really recommended. Uh, boosters, while they are a, a good, uh, they're advertised as a good option for doing webinars and things that require the type of internet bandwidth you're gonna need, they don't work well, uh, essentially because they are taking a signal that they're able to acquire and they're repeating it. So it has to jump from point to point. Uh, you're better off uh, wiring a connection into another part of your house and attaching a wireless access point to that and have the two work in tandem uh, rather than putting in a, a booster per se. And there are different options that uh, Benjamin is well aware with and has experience with that we can help you with on that. Yeah. Well, that's going to take up our time. We thank you very much for attending today. Uh, we'll look forward to you joining for our next webinar. Uh, we'll be posting this on our YouTube channel. So if you missed it or like to uh, review how we failed in our audio portion of this segment, uh, <laughs> feel free to take a, take a look at that later on as you like. <laughs> Uh, and for our next subject for next month, what are we talking about uh, next month, Betty? <laughs> Joe, I do not remember. I didn't <laughs> write that down. I think we're talking about telephone systems. Am yeah, I right or wrong? That is right. Your memory is spot <laughs> on. Benjamin is going to be working with us to talk about uh, phone systems and communications, uh, especially in light of working from out of the office. You know, are you going to go on-prem or are we going to do something that's uh, cloud-based in VoIP? Right. Stay tuned it, for more. Yeah, a lot of people have VoIP, so we definitely need to explore how to bring that into your home. Very good. Well, thank you all and have a good Wednesday. Absolutely. See you later.